Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome back. And if you find my analysis useful every week, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow colleagues, especially liking the content as well. Push that like button um, as it helps the YouTube algorithm and really gets the quality content out to uh, the um, to the to the universe, really. And uh, yeah, so um, just a little bit, just in case you're new about trading 180, um, we combine fundamental and technical analysis. A lot of traders will, um, especially on YouTube, will just say one or the other, but we combine both to really have um, a consistent edge within the markets. And there are edges beyond just looking at a price chart that you really need to be or should be aware of you know, things like interest rates, inflation, um, central bank monetary policy, etc. And uh, understanding value and why you should be buying a currency and why a currency is likely to be devalued by central bank policy. And uh, just quickly, how we do that is, at Trading 180 anyway, is we have a fundamental analysis spreadsheet, which uh, we identify all major currency pair fundamental convergence and divergence trades uh, to establish really price reversals or trend continuations. And also, uh, once we've done that, use supply and demand zone strategies, capture pain relief strategies, and stop hunt manipulation technical strategies to uh, really enter our trades and identify the best risk reward trades. Um, and if you wanna find out a bit more about that, you can go to trading180.com. So, First things first, as we always do every week, is get on to the fundamental and risk sentiment analysis. So, um, starting off in the US and inflation is rippling through the markets and it's just what the Feds want to see. Now, why is inflation important? It's because central banks have a mandate um, to reach a 2% inflation target. So, at the moment, they're a bit below that. And uh, the more or the higher inflation gets to that target, then they'll achieve the target. The problem is, though, is that you want uh, rising inflation when your economy is doing well. At the moment, the US economy isn't doing so well, especially with the viruses. Well, really, no economies are doing great, to be fair. But you don't want high inflation or rising inflation um, and your economy isn't doing well. That's what's known, I think, as stagflation, um, where you still have high unemployment and the economy isn't growing, but you're but you have rising inflation and especially inflation that might overshoot the two percent target. Now, the Federal Reserve have um, uh, uh, employed, I guess, a monetary policy called the FAIT, which is uh, the Federal Average Inflation Target. So even if inflation reaches two percent. Um, in maybe one quarter, what they're looking at is they won't raise rates or look to raise rates unless the average, maybe over, I think it's about a year or so, the average inflation is at uh, 2% rather than just that uh, single figure. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about and inflation and interest rates kind of confuse you, what you can do is uh, have a uh, look at my YouTube channel, type in fundamental in the search and then I have a ton of free videos that really goes over interest rates, inflation, and GDP, the relationship between them. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got, I've got hours and hours of videos uh, on the YouTube channel. And if you really wanna take your fundamental um, analysis to the next level, you can join the uh, mentoring group at trading180.com. So, the US at the moment with inflation are doing um, uh, okay, but economy-wise, they're not doing so great. Well, neither is anyone. And moving over to the uh, to Europe and the European Central Bank, the ECB, keeps stimulus steady as economy grapples with longer curbs. So again, with the uh, with, with Europe, um, they have kept their monetary support for the coronavirus stricken economy unchanged, betting that recently scaled up stimulus package is powerful enough to soften the impact of extended lockdowns. So stimulus is obviously uh, designed to support the economy. They don't want to necessarily 
still weaken the currency or add even more stimulus they're going to um, apply, I guess, a wait and see approach, and hopefully um, they don't have to devalue their um, the euro uh, too much, and they try to avoid that. So let's uh, they're in a kind of wait and see approach. The euro is um, suffering from uh, deflation, which is um, really uh, an expensive currency or an appreciating currency, and in a recession, you really don't want to have. Uh, and a, an appreciating currency. In fact, central banks want a devalued currency. They actually aim with interest rate uh, cuts and stimulus. They actually, the aim of that is to actually devalue their currency because a cheap currency makes them more competitive on the world stage. And uh, Lagarde again signals new recession even as ECB holds stimulus. So, um, you know, everyone is kind of worried about this double dip recession, especially in Europe. And um, again, if the if Europe were the only uh, country to kind of really maybe experience this double dip recession, I would probably say um, that, you know, the, uh, the euro should be really a sell. But um, in the I guess the coronavirus environment that we're in, it's basically judging who is the best of the worst, yeah? Who is the dog with the least fleas, as was once told to me by my mentor, Mark Chapman. Who is the dog with the least fleas? And the dog with the least fleas wins. So um, Europe aren't doing too badly, not as badly as some other um, uh, countries. Um, so uh, I think Europe are still okay, bit middle of the road, to be fair, when it comes to uh, uh, buying euros. Um, but moving over to the UK and UK inflation subdued during a brief respite from lockdown. So again, um, talking about inflation. So Britain's inflation rate picked up in December after shoppers were allowed back into the stores between lockdowns, but held well below the Bank of England's target in a Again, the target is 2%. So again, why is that important? Exactly the same reason why um, uh, it's, it, it's important for the, for the Federal Reserve, right? It's because rising inflation forces um, central banks to hike rates. And if they're hiking rates, they're basically, what they're saying is, is that they're making their uh, currency more attractive and increasing demand for that currency, basically making it more expensive. And they don't want to make it expensive. Not at the moment, anyway. Not with uh, you know double dip recessions and uh, and the likes. So um, there was a rumor that came out last week that the Bank of England may want to start to cut rates, but at the moment uh, that has been uh, dashed by the uh, central bank governor. So the pound climbs as market pushes back on negative rate speculation. Um, so the pound has rallied as traders push back on expectations uh, for when the Bank of England might cut borrowing costs to the end of the year uh, after uh, Governor Andrew Bailey said there was lots of issues with negative rates. So although um, the central bank is looking at uh, inflation as a, as a guidance as to what they should do with interest rates and stimulus, they also look at the economy. But for now, I think the pound is again another middle of the road uh, type currency and um, a bit difficult between the majors to be fair at the moment it's not really clear cut my uh, preference at the moment and the guys in the group have really been um, uh, taking advantage of the um, the commodity currencies like the Australian dollar the Canadian dollar as well as the uh, New Zealand dollar uh, buys and um, really selling um, safe haven currencies like the uh, Japanese yen and the Swiss francs so those are really the, uh, the the currency pairs we've been looking at so far as well as you know bits of uh, the euro buying the euro against other currencies like the yen etc um moving on as well to some more uk uh news as well so the uk recession risk eases as gdp declines less than forecast so that's actually quite positive for the uk right so that, again that came out last week so again more positive uh, news coming out for the UK 
And an interesting um, uh, article from Bloomberg Business Week was uh, forecasts for economists surveyed by Bloomberg and 2021 growth forecasts. And what you'll see at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it right here, but you've got 0, 5, 10, 15% that is the uh, annual GDP growth. And what you'll see is um, uh, you've got uh, the range forecast. So the UK, in fact, is the uh, only economy that actually has a, a forecast range. I guess some economists expect um, negative um, GDP growth uh, for 2021 up to around just above the five, maybe 6% growth. Um, the median forecasts and the uh, Bloomberg economist forecasts you know, you can pretty much see where, you know, the growth may be. And in fact, it looks like India, you know, the emerging markets, China um, are, are, you know, uh, projected to grow uh, the most um, in, the, in, in, in the world. And uh, you've got some, uh, some interesting ones like Canada, for example, uh, US, Australia forecasted, that's, that's quite surprising. Uh, Japan not doing so well when it comes to uh, growth and, and forecast. So again, these create divergences between growing and shrinking economies. The, con the economy that grows the most um, is should have a stronger uh, currency as there's more, going to be more demand for that currency because obviously businesses are growing, investment, etc., and the country that has the uh, the weakest growth is the one that you should probably look to uh, sell. So um, looking towards now the week ahead and this week, the week ahead in the US, uh, it will be a very busy week with economic data, including fresh GDP growth figures, Fed monetary policy decision and corporate earnings with reports from Apple, Microsoft, Facebook and Tesla. Investors will continue to focus on the pandemic, especially with new and more contagious strains of, uh, uh, sorry, uh, strains and will carefully monitor President Biden's legislative agenda in a divided Congress. Elsewhere, the IMF is set to release the World Economic Outlook and growth figures from Germany, Mexico and Hong Kong will be also in the spotlight. So a very busy week. G GDP is definitely going to be the because um, this this would be the uh, I guess the fourth quarter um, fourth quarter uh, uh, growth figures and again if they come out uh, as expected better or worse is really going to determine where um, you know traders expectations for the valuation of that currency will be so the U S is, is is up first I guess um, for fourth quarter growth so um lots to watch this week now moving on to the uh, technicals and starting off as we do every single week on the dow jones dollar index and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength overall against the basket of currencies like the euro the the pound the yen the australian dollar um and others and um Basically, how we use this is just to gauge some sort of confluence of overall dollar strength, and then we can use supply and demand zones um, as as confluence on dollar crosses. So, if you're seeing, if you want to be a buyer of the dollar right now, or we're in a demand zone on the dollar index, then you'd look you look for buy trades on the dollar yen, dollar CAD, dollar Swiss, for example, and that's really how we look at it. So, fundamentally, you need to decide which one you want to be. A buyer or a seller of I think me short term I think the dollar does have room to go to the upside I think if it's, if it's not now then it will be you know it will be there's no definite in um in trading but this area would be really good confluence I think for a buy trade um, at the lows of the range um, in the short term but I think in the medium to long term the, uh, the dollar is still really a, a, a sell. So um, we're actually within a decent range. So if we take that as the expensive area and that as a bargain area, yeah, so this would be an expensive area and this is a bargain. Why is this a bargain area? Because prices went higher, right? There was definitely demand for the um, for the dollar at this 89.20 uh, uh, area. So if price does come back down to here, that would be the first bargain area that you want wanted to look for. At the moment, we're actually at fair value because between uh, an expensive area at the moment, that's an expensive area and that's a bargain area, there is fair value. That's what 50% is, is fair value. 
So if you think the dollar is actually fair value and you want to be a buyer and you start to see bullish price action right there, then look for um, buy trades on the dollar, um, uh, any of the dollar crosses. And again, I think short term wise, um, I think the uh, maybe the next month or two, the dollar's probably going to, um, you know, may look to strengthen again. It just depends on, you know, fundamentally what's going on with, uh, you know, uh, Joe Biden, inflation and um, and really GDP this week. I think if GDP outperforms this week, then the dollar, I think it will be a, a really, really decent buy um, trade. So let's see if it, if it disappoints, then... Um, then again, regardless of what inflation is doing, I think the, the dollar will continue to be a sell. So let's see what happens with the dollar index. And again, just use that as confluence. Moving on to the dollar yen. And the dollar yen, uh, last couple of weeks, we did have um, a, you know, a sell off from this supply zone right here. We do have lower highs and lower lows being made. So we do have another um, supply zone there. And again, understanding which one you want to be a buyer of, I think with the with the dollar yen um, in a risk off, uh, well risk m more on sentiment because of global growth and the vaccine. I think um, if any pullbacks to this demand zone with some potential dollar strength, I think is is really a decent trade. I think right now you'd have to kind of wait for, if you want to be a buyer of this currency pay, you'd have to wait for price to kind of go above that zone or into that supply zone, pull back to a demand zone and then look for some long trades. If you're looking to get short on the dollar and buy the Japanese yen, then this zone here is okay. I think the I think the higher zone is probably the better area and the an even fresher zone right at the top here is probably the most desirable. The 105, I think, is a, is a really nice area to look for potential short trades. And again, you'd be buying the Japanese yen in a risk off environment or risk off sentiment. So um, that's the analysis. Dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss. So again, we're contained between you know this high, which is going to be uh, 0 0.895. Five um, and 0 0.87. So I think again, if I'm long, uh, going to be long dollar. I actually do like this area here, um, and especially like this area here. I think the Swiss franc will uh, devalue, um, uh, especially against the uh, the dollar. I don't think the dollar is really going to go down that much against. If it does go down, not not, not really that uh, further against the uh, um, against the Swiss franc. So again, understanding where we are in a ranging market environment, taking the high to the low, so an expensive area to a bargain area, we are at fair value. So I think that is probably the first chance we probably have of getting uh, long. If you wanna get long there, if, you, if you're waiting for a bit more of a bargain, then if prices do come down here, personally, I do like that for a buy trade of the dollar. But again, it really just depends on, you know, what GDP does uh, this week. If you think GDP is going to be um, uh, better than expected, then that is definitely a buy trade from now. And I'm gonna draw the uh, supply zone from there. Moving on to the dollar CAD. Again, dollar CAD from last week. Um, we've got, uh, we're in again a bit of a range at the moment. In fact, what I'll do is move that, and that moves to there. That's where supply is. Not the strongest area of supply, even though we've made lower lows there. But now you have to, again, understand zooming out bigger picture where are we um do you really want to get short at you know market lows or do you want to wait for a bit more of a bargain i think this 128 uh, to 129 12850 to 129 is a, is a, is a really good zone to look for any kind of short trades if prices can get up here i'm not really too keen on this zone here the level's been touched once twice is okay but i think fresher areas of supply uh, or demand are really where um, we should be looking. I think the Canadian dollar is probably due a bit of a pullback. I think overall long-term uh, forecasts do say a lower um, Canadian dollar, uh, sorry, a lower dollar against the Canadian dollar exchange rate. But I think I would really want to be um, a buyer of the, or buyer of the CAD and shorter of the dollar 
around these areas here or start looking anyway so that's that if we are looking for any kind of demand zones and a buy trade i would probably say this lower zone is decent for a potential buy not the best you really want again prices to uh, prove that there is strong demand here and then wait for a pullback and then uh, look for any kind of long trades for now intraday wise i guess it's okay but i wouldn't um I don't, I'm not really convinced that there is really strong demand right now for the uh, dollar against the Canadian dollar. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. So, um, again, there was a nice trade around here. Prices came in. And again, when you see something like this, just uh, when you see prices come into the daily zone, just go down to the lower time frames, look for an entry, whether it's a pin bar, or an engulfing candle, whatever your entry is. Um, you know to look for and then that's where you get the best you know uh, risk reward type trades so we use daily zones but we actually go down into the intraday charts to um to look for uh, entries so um nice entry there moved up uh, about 100 or so pips so that was yeah, about 120 pips so that was nice this week if you managed to get involved in that now again we're kind of middle of the road where do you want to be a buyer or a seller personally you'd have to really believe that the dollar is going to get stronger the us dollar if you do believe this week and there is positive news then that is actually a really nice trade if not i think the highs are really really nice for a potential um sell um i do like this if you want to be a continuation uh, trader i guess a trend trader and looking for buy trades again waiting for prices to really kind of pull back into probably a fresher area of demand or the top area of this demand and then look for any kind of buy trades in a risk on environment commodity currencies tend to do well um but again it depends on what happens with the dollar this week when it comes to gdp moving on to the pound dollar so pound dollar um not greatest chart in the world massive uh, demand zones here in the way that we draw them but if you do have large demand zones then what you want to do is break them up with support and resistance zones uh, within these within these areas so that's where you would look for the best areas of support and resistance within areas of demand if you want to be a buyer of the um, of the pound against the dollar um, to me this pair i don't really like this pair fundamentally so i'm kind of staying out of this but if you do want to be a buyer of the pound then it's literally again pullbacks into a demand zone um probably down into this 135 round number you can also go down into a lower time frame and look for and get some more accuracy so you can i can see actually where you've got a nice area of support there so you've got support 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 resistance support so there's going to be confluence of uh support um uh, and demand within this overall uh, higher time frame demand zone so that's uh, pretty much one way that we kind of break down these zones we've got lots of other confluences that we use this is pretty much you know the, just the basics of uh, understanding where the strongest areas of uh, um, uh, supply and demand are and we just use one of the uh, confluences we use our horizontal uh, support so um, going back to the daily I still do think that we are buying in quite a high area I would really probably look for if I was looking for a range I'd probably say if it can come down to this 134 area yeah, that fair value zone that would be actually quite nice for a potential buy so then we've also got another area to look for uh, fair value because really the move started this move to, to a higher high on a higher time frame started from here and we're here at the moment so if you get a decent pullback into fair value that's quite nice as well so decent areas to look for uh, pullbacks buying at highs isn't really advisable but um but yeah let's see what happens and again if you're looking to sell the dollar uh, or sorry, I say buy the dollar and sell the um the pound there's really no major areas of supply and if there are it's back in 2018 so i don't really like looking at those zones from you know back in the day i would probably wait for price to prove that there is uh supply here and then wait for a pullback into a supply zone and then that would be the um 
the play really. So um, at the moment, no supply zones or major supply zones for the uh, for the uh, to buy the U.S. dollar. Moving on to the euro dollar. Euro dollar. I did get involved in this uh, earlier this week. Um, so uh, trades worked out uh, quite nicely. Um, so nice fresh area of demand. Prices came back down into this zone. Um, we had an extreme trade um, in in the group. So uh, and a signal. So um, and I ended up getting involved in this trade and making a little bit so far and seeing what's happening um, on the lower time frame. But uh, if you do want to get involved in the uh, in this trade. Uh, from a buying perspective, then we do have higher highs and higher lows being made. So I can probably drag that to there and there. Now, and if you want, put it pull back, not the strongest area of demand to be fair, but it's a decent zone, especially maybe on an intraday. If you looked at the intraday one hour, you can see pretty much where, you know, the 1.206 would be and the 1.208 would be probably the area to look for any kind of long trades. Um, from a selling perspective, I think this zone is actually quite decent. Looking at where the high to the low is, we're coming up to fair value. So if there is again some positive news around US GDP, um, then this actually would be quite a nice sell. That best would be a very nice sell. Um, so uh, decent because then the, the US dollar would be probably be more on the front foot to be fair um, and it depends again I think it would, we'd have to really wait for then the European GDP to come out in order to kind of stem maybe the, 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 the continued downtrend if that comes out positive then obviously you probably will not get more of a downtrend but um, again in the short term I really do like this uh, this zone this 129 area around here so this could actually be if prices do come down to this zone here i think this is really nice for a potential buy trade um uh, i think i did a video on this or maybe it's in the private members group but um i might post it in on youtube for the public it depends um yeah so i think the zone is okay for now. Again, if you do get positive news for the US dollar, then I think you will get a, a, a definitely a reversal around here. Best area though, I think for a short trade is gonna be up at the highs. I do like that area there for a short trade. Moving on to the Euro Yen and the Euro Yen. Um, we have a uh, really nice trade that occurred. It was a it was a, a CPR zone. It wasn't anything to do with necessarily daily demand, but um, a really nice CPR level here, which actually worked out uh, for the group. Um, so that moves a good couple of maybe about 150 pips or so. So um, uh, we're back up to this area here, and again, I think if you really want to be a buyer of the yen, then that's a a very nice short trade technically um, but again fundamentals and risk sentiment really are the, are the reasons why prices will move so um, if you're looking at buying the yen you have to really kind of understand that you're buying a risk off currency overall I think the uh, the, the euro uh, should uh, appreciate against the yen so any kind of pullbacks into these zones will be decent buying opportunities but this is your first selling opportunity and I think the high is really a nice technical selling opportunity if you're looking to buy the Japanese yen so again if prices come up here and then you get more risk off sentiment then uh, that would be actually a decent uh, sell trade moving on to the Australian dollar US dollar and the Australian dollars US dollars we can see has been in this massive uptrend uh, risk on sentiment growth etc <clears throat> I think now is probably a time where we're entering into a bit of a ranging market and this could again start to reverse and pull back deeper. We need a deep pullback because you really can't have uh, prices have these shallow pullbacks yeah, and not have a deeper retracement. So um, we are at the highs, don't really want to be buying at the highs overall. This level has been touched once, twice already. So I think if the dollar does start to strengthen, I think that level is probably going to go and then we're down into maybe the 75, 76s, 75s for a potential uh, buy trade. And I do like the lower end of the 75 area for a potential buy. 
I do like that. Um, so, uh, but if you do want to be a again a, a buyer of the US dollar and then in anticipation of a potential uh, good number for GDP and some positive news, then I think now is probably the time to look for short trades. And you'd have to have your stop if you're having a wider stop above there. If you're entering intraday. Yeah, so on a lower time frame, let's say the four hour, then you just have to be prepared to enter a couple of times, maybe potentially have your stop loss around here, potentially if you get stopped out there, then just enter a few times because if you've got enough downside potential, let's say for example, you've got a nice, um, you know, eight to one, nine to one type trade, yeah? If you lose a couple of trades, but your potential downside, if you're right about it, um, it doesn't matter if you lose a couple of times, you know, because you've made up for it on your risk reward. So decent um, uh, risk reward here. We are, we are at the highs of, uh, of, of the uh, daily time frame chart as well. So lots of downside potential to be fair. I do like that from a risk reward perspective, but overall my long-term bias, medium to long-term bias is to buy the Australian dollar. So um, you have to make a decision of whether you want to be a buyer of the dollar and then buy um, of the US dollar and then be a buyer of the uh, Australian dollar. Um, uh, me personally, it's 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 just uh, a lot more easier and simpler to just uh, pick a direction, pick a uh, uh, a uh, uh, currency, uh, fundamentally understanding its overall strength from a medium to long term perspective, and then wait for pullbacks into those zones rather than trying to, you know, take every single uh, trade and every single every single supply or demand zone. Um, moving on to the Australian dollar, Japanese yen. And again, a measure of risk sentiment. You can see that we've been in really a risk, um, some risk uh, on sentiment. And you can see the Australian dollar, the commodity currency is the one to buy. Prices didn't quite come down into this, um, into this demand zone here. Unfortunately, if it does come down into that and you uh, into that zone at 979.47 and beyond, then that's a decent area to look for any kind of buy trades, I would say. Probably the better area would be where you've got some support and resistance confluence, so just around there. If it gets a deeper pullback, that's quite nice. Um, and again, just be aware that you are buying at market highs. So um, as long as the upside potential is worth it, then it's worth a trade. But a deeper pullback is probably more preferable if you are looking to buy the uh, Japanese yen based off of some sort of risk off. Um, sentiment that may be coming into the market and as well I would probably say you really need to see if you want to buy the Japanese yen and really confirm risk off sentiment you want to see the stock market really um, falling as well so not just a pullback you want to see the narrative of why the stock market you know is you know is is kind of crashing and I don't like to use extreme language like crashing but um, uh, if the if, if the negative sentiment around uh, the stock market bubble popping etc then money will tend to flow into safe haven assets like the japanese yen after the stock market does so we have to also watch what the stock market is doing in order to uh, really trade the uh, the japanese yen or the australian dollar uh, and finally moving on to gold and gold this week um traders were kind of got a bit I think it got a bit stop hunted here and I say I've got a bit, they did get stop hunted here. Um, I did a video in the private members group. There was a nice um, uh, stop hunt, which we couldn't really take advantage of because the time that it happened in the evening um, uh, was, was uh, I think it was like uh, at 10 o'clock, I think, if I go down to the lower time frame, Yeah, so that was, there was the stop hunt right there. That was it, at 11 o'clock in the evening. So, um, you know, loads of traders would have had their stops below that level there, so um, they would have, they, we could have taken advantage of that, but it's just the time of uh, evening that it happened. Couldn't take advantage of that, but that does create, a, uh, I guess, present another uh, trading opportunity for us um, in order to get long, which again, I share with my private members group if prices come down here. And as the traders know, this creates something called a capture pain relief zone. So if prices do come down here, this would be really nice for a, uh, a buy trade. Um, not financial advice, of course, none of this is financial advice. Um, gold for me is still a buy. 
there are, I guess, what they would call headwinds because of potential dollar strength. If the dollar starts to grow, um, and I say dollar starts to grow, GDP starts to grow, then again, there's probably going to be some short-term negative uh, uh, sentiment around the uh, around gold. But you have to also understand that if inflation is rising, yeah, which basically inflation is is devaluation or depreciation of a currency and it starts to get out of hand then gold will benefit from that so if it starts to overshoot that two percent or that three percent etc then gold is still a buy and remember that there has been trillions of dollars of money you know uh, currency printing money printing devaluation going on and that is going to feed its way into the market at some point fundamentally so um you know, you've just had Joe Biden's, uh, you know, I think he's had was it something $1.9 trillion stimulus or something like that. So it's it's crazy. We're going into the trillions now. Before, when I remember when a billion was like, wow, a billion. Now it's like a billion is, 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 is nothing. It's like a trillion dollars. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy the amount of money that's being um, flooded into the market. And uh, gold benefits either way, right, from inflation um, or a um, a, a I guess uh, uncertainty around uh, you know the the economy. So um, gold again, maybe short term potential pullbacks, but just look at this as long term buys. If you can get a nice buy there, especially down into this seventy, I'm um, sorry, seventeen eighty six, really really nice. Uh, 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 buying opportunity around there from a selling opportunity i don't think there's anything right now until prices really come down prove that there's supply here and then a pull back into that zone that would be where you'd look for any kind of short trades other than that you're looking for probably a sell around the uh, 1942 1965 area all right guys so that's it for this week don't forget to like subscribe please like definitely uh subscribe as well share with your fellow colleagues leave a comment um thank you as well to all of the uh the comments the constructive criticisms even the you know the haters out there that don't like uh, the way that i uh, i trade it's all good you know what i mean everyone has their own opinions and um you know peace and blessings to you all take care have a great week and please stay safe and take care